Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James and today I'm joined with a special guest. This is a Mike Godvaz beside me and he is a bit of a car guy. <laughs> Hi folks. So you are a car guy. We're talking Batmobile today. There's a new Batmobile in town. <laughs> but why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you yourself, your backdrop and how you got into cars. Hmm. Well, when I popped out, I probably said car. That might have been the first word I ever said. Uh, yeah. So back in 66, I had a 66 uh, 426 Hemi that I bought brand new. Uh, after that, being a bit of a Mopar nut, after that, I had a 69 Dodge uh, Super B with the uh, 440 six-pack engine. They had a uh, liftoff fiberglass hood, so they came with no hinges, had four pins, one in each corner. You wanted to check your oil, you had to lift the hood off. Uh, so I've had some performance cars, uh, built some neat hot rods. I had a 34 Ford that I put a, a 426 Hemi in with a 671 supercharger on it. It all fit under the hood. Had a Jaguar XKE sports car suspension on it. I built the whole car myself. Uh, a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, uh, did the bodywork and the paint. Pretty outstanding car. You can see one of the cars that I did 100% of myself sitting in the behind us here in a photograph. It's a 1937 Cord, C-O-R-D. It was built on a Tornado chassis. So it was front wheel drive like the original car. This was the first front wheel drive car made in America. So currently for those that are interested, I'm working on what we call today a Resto Mod. It's a 48 Cadillac uh, Fastback and it has a Corvette suspension underneath all around, uh, stainless steel exhaust. Uh, oh, what's it got? It's been sectioned, it's been chopped, but so little amount that it just makes the car, I think, looks a little bit better than the original. It's not so humpy, so bulky, like the originals were. So yeah, I've been at this uh, for quite a while. So you know, know a little bit, a thing or two about, about cars? Uh, maybe, some people might. <laughs> Not agree, but yeah, I guess we could say that. All right, today we're going to break down and then rank the Batmobile. We're not going just new. We're going to start all the way back in 1943 with this beauty right here. This was Lewis Wilson's Batmobile, the first one, I guess, to hit the silver screen and the serial they used to uh, play in the movie theater weekly. 15 episodes they had. What do you make of this car? What What is this car? Would this be a good Batmobile? Uh, this would be for the period, you know, this would be awesome, an awesome Batmobile. I think uh, this was a 39 uh, Series 72 uh, Cadillac. So that would be the top of the line Cadillac of the day. And uh, yeah, this would be, you know, pretty cool for that uh, um, Bruce Wayne, I guess, uh, to drive around in and with the top down or with the top up. I guess when he was Bruce Wayne, he had the top up. And when he was uh, Batman, he had the top down, I think, if I recall. Did you ever consider turning your caddy into a Batmobile? No, no. I like I'm a I'm a motorhead for sure, but uh, not that much. <laughs> uh, this one, uh, I hate to say it, but I think this one might be a little lame. <laughs> and if you read the history on this, they had lots of trouble with this car too, uh, you know, on the set. So I don't know what the problems were, but yeah, it's a rare car, and it's. You know, for a collector today, it's uh, probably a desirable car to have in your collection. But uh, yeah, I don't know whether it fits the fits the bill for uh, not up there. Not up there with uh, with a Bruce Wayne type of vehicle. You would want the top of the line if you're going to go with something that's uh, re reasonably stock. Especially if you're a billionaire like Bruce Wayne. Especially if you're a billionaire. And now we have my personal favorite Batmobile, the old Adam West machine. You know a little bit about this one. Yeah, like I used to, I, I went in the show car circuit for many years back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, pretty much all the time uh, there was one of these in there. And I think they made a, a few of them just for the show circuit. So I'm not sure uh, the ones that we saw uh, were actually uh, running vehicles. But I think uh, there was uh, two or three of them, I think, if I recall, that were actual running vehicles. Um, so the ones we saw... They looked okay, <laughs> but they, if you looked at little details, uh, like inside on the dash where all the switches and controls were, they had those little uh, clicked labelers, you know, the little, put out the little plastic label. They had some of those on top <laughs> where, 
where the switches were and and different controls. So that looked a little little lame, I thought. And Aunt Harriet putting on the labels on the Batmobile in the yeah. background. <laughs> <laughs> and for the finer things in life. No need, madam. But that's the quintessential Batmobile, I think. Yeah, I think this is the well for now. We'll see. Time, yeah. time tells. Time tells, you know, a new generation come along uh, and new vehicles, you know, things change. And now, well, maybe this is the quintessential Batmobile. Yeah. It wasn't at the time, but 1989 brought us this beauty. Yeah, this is this is my favorite, to be honest with you. I haven't seen the new one, but uh, up till uh, I'm saying I haven't seen the new one, this is my favorite of them all. This is one that you could actually envision roaring around the streets. Uh, so this was built on a couple of chassis, you know, to lengthen it out. Uh, yeah, this was pretty cool. So is this just like a combination of cars or is it? Well, I think if I if I remember, they built it with uh, two Chevy chassis. They used two Chevy chassis uh, to make the extra long wheelbase on this thing, and uh, you know, mold them together or weld them together, whatever they do, uh, to make one vehicle. So this is a pretty cool rig. How practical would this have been for someone like Bruce Wayne to have made, and Bruce Wayne from this movie where he has no mechanics. <laughs> Well, yeah, we don't know what resources he had. Uh, they didn't get into the making of the car, but this was pretty cool. Car. And this is just a variation of the one that we just saw. Yeah, it's got some little uh, fins over top of the rear fenders there. And Batman Forever, Joel Schumacher comes in, decides to recreate the entire Batmobile. This one looks kind of like a bat, and it glows, too. All the lines, they glow blue. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to say anything negative, but, you know, uh, it didn't strike my fancy. Uh, I can appreciate that they wanted something new here, uh, but... Uh, you know, from back when Batman was supposed to have been uh, in real time, in what whatever decade he was in, uh, I find it difficult to think that they might have had a car like this back then. Have you seen a car like this at any of the shows or anything? No, I've never seen uh, anything like this one up close, just uh, photographs. George Clooney, the probably everyone's favorite Batman. This was his Batmobile. It was a single seater. Yeah, I uh, this one might be a little bit nicer than the previous one, but it's still in there too. I like the idea of the uh, the jet intake on the front and the uh, the jet exhaust on the uh, on the one we saw previously. Looks uh, really cool, but not something that you would. Uh... No, you know I. <laughs> Like I said, I don't want to really say anything too negative, but it's just its just when I look at this, it's just a little over the top, I think. And maybe that's what you want. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to get differences of opinion here, obviously. <laughs> Got to sell some toys. Now, don't worry. No, most people don't care about that one. You're pretty, pretty good. People forget it. Now we... Now, like the 2000s came in and they kind of got rid of the cars and they went with tanks. This is the Tumblr from the Nolan trilogy. Yeah. What do you think? Do you have any thoughts on tanks? Or you uh, the, the way cars? they used the well, yeah, no, I, I could, you know, I can handle this one. I, I kind of liked it in the movies. Uh, you know, the way they used it, it was like, it was within the extreme uh, realm of possibility there, you know, so it was, it was kind of cool. It did its job. It did. Yeah. And they came up with a reason why he would have it. It was in Wayne uh, industries was making their army tech stuff. So practical that he would get it. And Batfleck had a similar one, another tank, but with lots of guns on it. Yeah, I, this is another one that it, to me is a little over the top. Um, but again, I'm sure it has its uh, followers. Um, but not one of my favorite ones. You know, they kind of, they're kind of losing the car thing. But you're right, going more over the top, kind of be cool and instead of 
sleek. I like the sleek Batman stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we have the this year's the Pattinson, Pattinson, Batmobile, Hot Rod, his old street racing car that he raced when he was a teenager or early 20s. What do you make of this one? Well, it fits in with what's going on today in, in the automotive performance world. If you look at the big three automakers, North American uh, companies, they've got some pretty uh, spectacular hot rods, um, stuff that we haven't seen ever before. We've got engines with over 600 horsepower. Um, you've got the one uh, Mopar that's over uh, 800 horsepower. And you can buy that from your local dealer. I mean, that's uh, kind of insane. So this this car fits in with that uh the theme that's going around. Even Cadillac has a has an outstanding hot rod. I think it has over the uh, the new one this year. I think has over 600 horsepower. So pretty cool equipment, and and they handle and stop well. That's that's the interesting thing. Some of our performance cars from yesteryear, uh, they look they they looked good. They sounded good when you fired them up when you were driving in them. But if you wanted to do a little bit of uh, handling on a twisty road, uh, yeah, well. You look for something else, but these new ones, they, uh, they will handle as well as they, they go fast and they look. Yeah, it would uh, be pretty involved. I'm sure that uh, might be maybe a year pro, uh, program or longer to build something like that and uh, get it just right so that it would perform. Do you think you'll see those kind of Batmobiles now as shows? Or do you think the classic looking uh, Adam West or Michael Keaton ones are still going to have their place and have a longer shelf life than this new one? No, I, I think this new one might have uh, be up there too uh, because there's people with money and you can see the realism uh, built yeah. into that vehicle. Uh, you know, it almost looks like something you might see in a performance uh, environment out on the streets. So this one will have some followers, I'm sure. Yeah, this one I think is supposed to be his, it was his father's car and he kind of took hold of it and uh, turned it into what it is and he raced it on the streets. Do you know, yeah. anything, about, you know anything about racing on the streets? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we got tall tales about that, some war stories. <laughs> all perfectly legal, I'm sure. Yeah. We right. got So we've looked at all the Batmobiles now. Let's go through. Which one was your is your lead favorite? Would it be the, the sequel the, in 1943, was it? Would it be back then, or would it be maybe the Val Kilmer one or the George Clooney? I think it'd be the Clooney one that uh, came after the one that's my favorite. Yeah, that that's the oh, that one there. That would, yeah, that one there doesn't appeal much to me at all. Sorry, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't think you're alone on thinking that. And what is uh, which one is your favorite by far, bar none? Best Batmobile I've ever seen. That one right there. The original Tim Burton. That, one. that one edges out the original uh, 66 version by just a smidge. Just a smidge. They're right there pretty much even with each other. But uh, I think this one here is, I just like it a little bit. It's a little bit more performance oriented. It looks like it's performance oriented. And which one is the most practical? Which one, if you were Batman, which one would be the Batmobile for practicality reasons that you would choose? Hmm. Good question. I, this one might fit in there. This one, this one had some, uh, some guns over top of the uh, front wheels just behind uh, mm -hmm. that used to come out some machine guns. So it was, uh, it had good armament on it too. All right. For fighting the bad guys. Tim Burton for the win. <laughs> there you go. He knew what he was doing. Who knew he was such a car guy? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me here on this show. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. I learned a little bit about cars. My favorite Batmobile probably 66 followed by keaton followed by the newest one those are my top three yeah. i like the i like that one from 1939 was it 39 or 43 though yeah that it was a 30 that... it was from 43 but i think it was a 39 uh cadillac series 72 so that would have been the top of the line that was just a simple car you just that, you it would have had a v8 and had a flathead v8 i think they were 358 uh 338 or 358 cubic inches 150 horsepower that was a, that was an outstanding motor, by the way. For those that might be interested, the the military used them in uh, WW2. They were a tank engine, so that's how robust that engine was that Cadillac was using. The flathead V8 makes perfect sense for Bruce Wayne and the <laughs> Batman to get behind that one. All right, Mike. Thanks so much for joining me on Digital Charcuterie. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. <laughs> <laughs>